Okay, welcome to lecture two of this model six, now the introduction to the final volume method. And this one we're going to talk about the CFL numbers, so this will be a brief discussion. So first of all, what is this CFL number that we see all around? So as you know what is this, okay, this the, the CFL number is defined like this, okay? It's a ratio, it's a non-dimensional number, by the way, and it's the ratio between the time step and the mesh size and a characteristic velocity okay so it's very important in cfl it's not a in cfd it's not a magical number and this cfl number will define the condition to warranty stability of the numerical schemes okay different numerical schemes they have different stability conditions depending on the cfl number okay so not all numerical schemes have same stability requirements okay we're going to briefly address that so basically, what is this CFL condition? A CFL condition is just the, the maximum CFL number that you can use with your numerical method. Okay, so we have, in CFD, we have explicit and implicit solvers. Okay, so all the solvers that, all the solvers but one, there is one in open form, okay, that likely you are not going to, to use, but all the solvers in open form are implicit solvers. So implicit solver means that they are unconditionally stable. You don't have any restriction in the CFL number. However, the fact that you don't have a restriction in the CFL number, it doesn't mean that you can go and use super large CFL numbers. You use super large CFL numbers, you are going to lose uh, accuracy because large CFL numbers are indication of large time steps. So you are going to lose a lot of information, okay? So there is a balance between accuracy and diffusion, okay? So, but in theory, you don't have any limit. I have run simulation with CFL number up to 50, 100. There is no problem, but I know that I added too much numerical diffusion. Then we have explicit solver. In explicit solvers, they do have a, a limit in the maximum CFL number. So some of them, the limit is one, some of them is two, some of them is 0 0.5, okay? But usually it's not very high. But that means that explicit solvers, is you go larger than that CFL number, they immediately will diverge, okay? So you can do, there is a linear stability analysis now, okay, using all the Fourier method, and you can find that that is the limit, and you will see that immediately they di diverge. So this being said, remember that all solvers but one in open phone are implicit okay that solver in open phone that is explicit likely as i say likely you are not going to to use it so i'm not going to go into details about that and mean this means that you can use any cfl number okay but be careful that as you use too large you are going to add numerical diffusion now when it comes to to the time derivatives so in our personal experience okay up to a cfl number of five okay you are going to maintain good accuracy okay so Larger CFL number means that you are going to reach convergence, your final time, faster, okay? Because you, ha you have this larger time, so, okay? But here you can go up to five, good accuracy, and uh, reaching your final time faster, faster, okay? More than five, you start to see that you are, uh, you are losing some information, so be careful. So I like to see this CFL number as follow, no? as the speed of the PDA, PD of your equation that you are solving over the speed of the mesh. Okay, so these are quantities specifically related to the mesh and the dual delta t, and this is just the PD, you know, the characteristic velocity of your equation. So basically what you are doing is that a CFL of one, you are solving, let's say that you are advancing your solution, no one cell at, at a time. Instead, you you still you, you you use a CFL larger and see that by every time step you 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 will cover more cells in a single iteration. So that means that you are going to add more diffusion. So so basically, this is what is going to happen: is you are interpolating the value here at this phase, and you keep increasing the value. See that what you are doing is just diffusing the solution okay and this is the problem okay very large cfl numbers they are going to add too much numerical diffusion so usually this is why i say uh, very often you now during this lecture i have said that 
keep your CFL number about one. Okay, one means that good accuracy and something like that. Okay, sometimes even you can go 0.5, but there is no need. One is already very good accuracy, and see that two is also good. Okay, so this is my 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 own personal interpretation about this this number. Uh, something important that this CFL number is not the only con uh, condition, not to guarantee stability, accuracy, or that you are going to reach a solution. There are many other criteria. Uh, criteria that you need to take into account stuff like mesh quality your numerical method and so on but this is a very important no value that you should consider and you should monitor when you are running your simulation so how can you control your cfl number clearly you can control that okay changing your mesh size so this is this is your mesh size by the way this criterion is local so in each direction you can have different cfl number so see that you can control it changing your mesh but also by changing your physics no lower velocity lower cfl number but the easiest way to control that is using the the changing the delta t so to control this when in open form go to control dictionary and change your delta t so a smaller delta t usually are translated into a smaller cfl larger delta t are translated into larger cfl number so you also have the option to impose it like this but then remember that you have this option, adjustable time step, that you can set the maximum CUDA of your simulation and then OpenFun will automatically adjust your delta T to reach this value. Okay, so this is very helpful. Okay, I like to use it okay, a lot, but it's up to you what method you use. Uh, have in mind that this option adjustable is not in every single solver that you have in OpenFun. This option, you only have it with the solvers where you have where where we where they use what they call in open phone the pimple coupling or the pimple method you have this option for instance you use piece of phone piece of phone doesn't have this option you need to control delta t using uh, your cfl using delta t if you use pimple phone you have this option so you can control it like this or like this it's up to you okay uh so here you have these comments what i mentioned okay so also you can put a limit in the maximum delta t and so on okay so here for instance you want to run with a maximum current of 20 put 20 then or the solver automatically will adjust delta t to reach that 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 could a number uh be careful also with the the initial iteration that you are going to do when running the simulation is done using this value so do not put here a large value okay put usually uh it's recommended to put a, a small value so what is going to do open is going to scale from this small value to the larger values okay it's better to do it in this way do not so avoid putting here large values okay so when you run the simulation, okay, we already are familiar with this. So here you have the report. Okay, so see that you have here the current number. So you have mean and maximum value. You should check the maximum value, okay? Is the maximum value the one that you should control, okay? So it, it, this can be in one single set, but cell, but this is the one that you can control. So see that you have the report, your maximum current, the delta T, and then you have your standard solution, okay? So this is all for 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 the cfl number okay so later we're going to do some other tutorials and we're going to play around with these options but remember okay the main take take away that the solvers in open phone they're implicit so you don't have any any stability condition when it comes to the to the cfl number however be careful that large cfl numbers may add numerical diffusion so you are going to lose information and your finite solution is not going to be that accurate okay and in our personal uh experience cfl numbers up to five are okay you still get good accuracy okay so if you want to go large time step just keep keep it not no not no larger than five your cfl number that you can control by changing delta t so that's all. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Bye.